Very important. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call uh, Barbara Kuriga. Mr Speaker, it's a pleasure uh, to be speaking in the House and taking a call tonight. I'm very proud of the primary industries and uh, the expectation in the year to June 2015, 35.2 uh, billion uh, brought in by primary industries. And I know at this point in time, we're looking at a volatile situation in the dairy industry. And I just want to shout out to my fellow farmers tonight, uh, the falling dairy prices have been a concern but they are temporary and they will come through and we do know that we're looking for a bright future uh, in this industry. And I also want to mention my colleague Stuart here talked about the funding that was going out uh, to help farmers at this time. Uh, the 500 uh, million dollars that was uh, half a mi sorry half a million five hundred thousand dollars that was actually delivered at field days uh, which has been uh, used for to train more people, there's going to be another 100 people out there working with Dairy NZ, working with beef and lamb, and, and encouraging those farmers to come forward. And so while the industry itself is very resilient, we just want to be quite careful about talking too much about individual farmers being resilient, because we want them to stand up and ask for help when they need it. And they will, if they do that, if they work with their banks, they will be resilient and they will come through. But I want to also acknowledge that there's a whole lot more to this primary industry than we focus on dairy, and I'm very proud of it. But I've, uh, over recent weeks, uh, had the opportunity to visit uh, Zespri with our uh, committee. And, you know, that's an industry that's come through some very tough times, had the disease PSA unexpectedly uh, come in with their gold kiwi fruit variety that they had at the time. And they put in a huge effort around getting people through. And now that's an industry that's really thriving. And what was impressive to me was that we talked to those farmers about what, uh, those horticulturists, about what they were growing in their kiwi fruit. And they were talking about the dry matter content, the sugar content, everything to those people was important about the taste of that kiwi fruit and the experience of that kiwi fruit from the time it left the farm until it went to the pack house. The pack house we visited were absolutely focused on keeping that quality all the way through to the market so that they knew that the person who picked up that kiwi fruit and had it at the end of the day on their plate was having a fantastic experience and will continue to buy the kiwi fruit. I've also been uh, at Teagle Chickens, which is a fast-growing industry in Taranaki. Yes. And what's really interesting for me, and I also note um, in our estimates there's another $10 million going towards animal welfare, and often the chicken people get targeted when it comes to animal welfare. Well, actually, I can tell you that there are no meat chickens kept in cages. There are no hormones used. There are a whole lot of rumours out in our society about what goes on with chickens. And I can tell you when I was in one of those uh, newly developed sheds on that particular day with 13 uh, with 35,000 13 day old chickens that it was 27 degrees inside that chicken shed and it was actually 10 degrees outside and if I was a chicken I know where I would make the choice to go because it was very hard to go back out into the cold. I also want to acknowledge if you come into Taranaki King Country on the way from Taumaranui, which is in our esteemed uh, Select Committee Chair's electorate, across to Tikawiti just after you leave uh, Tamaranui, there's a wonderful little alpaca shop. Now, we don't often think a lot about alpacas when it's primary industry, but these people have very, very selective breeding. They have white ones, they have black ones, and they have brown ones, keeping them very pure. They're selling the products in their shops. Um, the wool that actually comes off these alpacas of a, a very, very high quality. So it's a combination there of, of the primary industries combining with the tourist industries and providing a product that people want to see. And I can tell you that those alpacas are very, very cute. They do spit, but they are very, very cute. I'm also um, very impressed with the extra seven and a half million 
that uh, over two years has been uh, put into developing key skills and systems. And I was very pleased when the Minister talked before about the Ministry for Primary Industries and the Ministry for Education working together. And prior to coming into Parliament, I was involved with a group called the Primary Industries Capability Alliance. And as part of that group, their role is to encourage new talent to come into our industries. Thank you. Members, members, we come to the vote, and the questioners at vote lands and vote primary industries and food safety stand part of the schedules. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. A party vote has been called for. I'll ask the clerk to conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. Votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 32 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 12 votes opposed. Māori Party. Two votes in favour. Act New Zealand. One vote in favour. United Future. One vote in favour. Members, the ayes are 63, the noes are 58, the votes are agreed to. Members, we now come to the votes in the social development and housing sector, volume B5, volume 10. And the question is that vote building and housing and vote social development stand part of the schedules. I call 